Oh, 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 Of you that don't know, Insurgency Sandstorm has dropped some new content along with going free to play for a certain amount of time. My roommate was away this week, so I was able to use his computer to actually try out these new features because Uncle Durek's computer is uh, out of commission. So I thought that I would hop on and take a subscriber with me just to see what's going on with the new update. All right, oh shit, I haven't touched this game in like 10 years. Same, two, two new maps and a uh, couple of guns and a couple of scopes. Right. Also, it's still unoptimized as hell, so... Is this still unoptimized? Kinda. The new update itself actually consisted of a bunch of new cosmetics, a few new maps, some from the original and some brand new, and two distinct game modes. I think that was it, but I could be wrong. What I really want to talk about is the new game modes and how I felt about them. And towards the end, I'll talk a little bit about the roadmap. So let's get into that. Is that a bad guy? Is that friendly? You see that? You see the enemies are they are full black. We are all camo. You guys are all like walking as if you're like AI or something. It's like oh. The first game mode that we're going to be talking about is Hardcore Co-op. I ended up really liking this mode. For once, it actually made the game feel tactical. I mean, I wasn't really good at the mode because one, I haven't played <laughs> Insurgency in a while, and two, I was using a laptop, and you know, I'm so used to the keyboard that it's just like, not even a comparison. I ended up dying a lot. Oh, oh bitch. Oh. The grenade. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna die. Ah, I ran into it. Oh, I go back to you oh, and I just get killed. And as hardcore modes go, that's just how it was gonna be until I actually played a lot more of the game itself. And I unfortunately don't have time for that. So what made this game mode more tactical? Well, players had to actually play it slow. Because not only is it easy for you to die, they added in the second penalty. That penalty being, you will lose all of your gear when you die. You realize you don't have any armor, right? <clears throat> They do have armor sometimes. No, you don't have armor. I don't because I died. That's right. If you die, for the insurgents, you're going to be reduced to a Mosin and a pistol. That's it. No gear, no nothing. And on the security team, you're going to be reduced to an M24 sniper rifle with no scope. So when you come back to life, basically you're doing bolt action until you decide to find a box where you can actually restock your gear. That or you could pick up weapons from enemies. But the enemy's weapons that you pick up only have one mag. So if you decide to go that route, you're basically forced to constantly pick up enemy weapons until you find a box to restock your gear. In a way, this is kind of a genius move because it allows the player to try out new weapons with different attachments. Because, hey, maybe you didn't know that you like this new scope, or maybe the gun does feel better with a foregrip, or I don't know, something like that. I actually found it rather cool to try out new weapons that I never actually thought I would, you know, do before. But at the same time, I only got one mag, so it's probably better if you, you know, try to go for the re-gearing. But the boxes are so far and in between that you really have to either rely on your team or take it slow when you're pushing up to the the next one. The game mode is essentially like checkpoint because most of the time you're just going from point to point. When I play regular co-op, most of the time players are just running from point to point, not really giving it a second thought. But because hardcore mode adds that extra penalty, it really forces the player to think more tactically on how to get to the next objective without dying. That's why I really like it because throughout the time that I've actually played Insurgency Sandstorm, like it's always felt more arcadey to me than actually tactical. And that's what I think about Insurgency Sandstorm hardcore co-op. Okay, this mode is really bastard, if I might say, because the zombies are really hard to kill. Oh shit. You hear that? Those are motherfuckers. I'm dead! Stop shooting me! Fuck! You shoot at you, motherfucker. Okay, I got a bit scared. 
The next mod that we're gonna be talking about is Frenzy. Honestly, Frenzy feels a lot like a mod, which I guess is foreshadowing for the future. It's essentially like a zombie mode, but it's actually really fun. Basically, the insurgents are zombies. They come at you with like knives and machetes. You got like the regular ones that are just like running towards you. Those guys are easy to take out, but then you have the ones that are on fire. They get close to you, they'll catch you on fire. The ones that are on fire can also throw molotovs. And what's even worse about those guys is that they can teleport. <laughs> Whoa, it disappeared. Whoa! That's not cool. That's not cool. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. That's not cool. One behind you! Behind! Okay, I got him. Oh, behind me! <laughs> There's also PUBG. PUBG! Oh god, no! <laughs> How many kills? Ah, PUBG! Jesus uh. Christ! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> oh my god. This fucker is tough to kill. Like, I spend all my ammo on him, and he just comes up and fucking one taps me, just dunk! If he had a frying pan, that would have been 10 out of 10, but nah, he doesn't have one, unfortunately. It's a really fun game mode, I gotta say. So those are just my thoughts on Frenzy and Hardcore Co-op. What are your thoughts on these modes? Are you sick and tired of zombie modes? Is it so 2008? Is Hardcore mode just too tough for you? Do you not have enough hair on your chest, son, or, or, or daughter? Daughter? Again, I actually enjoyed these game modes, but I'm probably not as perceptive as some of the folks down in the comments section, so I genuinely want to know what you guys thought. So now let's talk about the roadmap that they just dropped. This roadmap is apparently going to go from July to December, and it honestly seems like it's going to cover everything that we've been criticizing the game for. It says here that um, they are going to be adding two new maps, a snow map and another map that seems to be actually blacked out here, or not blacked out, but like crossed out. I'm gonna guess this is probably a fan favorite map that's from the original, at least that's what I I'm gonna guess, because why would they cross it out? But if that is the case, that it is the same map from the original, I kind of wish that it wasn't. Like, again, I really wish that they would have just started out with the original map so that they could build onto it, because we're just basically going back to the same maps that we tried out in the original with sharper visuals and a new coat of paint. You know, with the new game, I want new stuff, but I do like the maps from the original, so I kind of just wish they would have started out with the original maps and then added onto that. But that's just me. What do you guys think? Moving on, there's gonna be new modes that are added to the game. One's called PvP Frontline and co-op outpost. I'm not sure what these modes are. I like playing Insurgency Sandstorm, but I'm not an avid player for that game. So I'm not sure what these modes are per se. I'd have to read up on them. They're going to be adding night vision maps. Oh, I'm sorry. Night versions of maps. <laughs> yes, we're going to get night vision goggles more than likely. You know, I always say that when you make maps dark, it seems like you add like more maps to the game. Like I always say that it's like a, you know, sort of cheating. You're giving the illusion that there's more maps by making them dark, which isn't a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. And I wish that more developers would do that. But yeah, I can't wait to see those night vision goggles, see how they work. Oh, and tack lights. Just anything that could light up in the dark, you know? These next couple of updates are going to be adding new weapons. This includes attachments and upgrades. They've outlined a few. It looks like it says the Tavar 7. Tavor, I think it is. I don't know. The AS Val and a few more that I can't really see. They blurred them out. It says here that they're going to be adding a hardcore rule set for all modes. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe they've gotten a lot of criticism that the game doesn't actually feel tactical enough. So maybe they're going to add like a second penalty, like what what, what they did with um, hardcore co-op, where if you die, you'll lose your weapon and gear and be reduced down to like a Mosin or an M24. Maybe maybe that's what they mean. I don't know. But if they do decide to go that route, that is going to force a lot of people to think before they actually push forward, which I think is actually a step in the right direction, but I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Here's one thing that the community wanted from the very beginning, a level editor and mod tools. Yep, they are going to be adding that in this uh, roadmap here. So I can't wait to fucking have my shotgun saying random shit while it's shooting. Fucking blah, I got you, bitch. Blah, I got you, bitch. You know, that kind of shit. They're going to have new character customization, which I think is cool. You know, it's always fun to have more cosmetics. But one thing that I wish they would add is um, more voice actors. Like, if they want a voice actor, just let me get in there. I'll do it for free, shit. Yalla! Yalla! Hello? 
Is anyone there? Where'd everybody go? Ah shit! Ah shit! Ah shit! I've actually voice acted for a couple of games at this point. I'd be down to do it. I have a dev in my Discord, so maybe I should just ask her. But overall, I honestly like what I'm seeing in this roadmap. Finally, they're addressing all the things that all the players wanted. I mean, it's a little late, but at least they're doing it, right? The moment that they add mods into the game, they're gonna see a gigantic influx of players coming in from the original game. If I understand correctly, they actually had some issue with, um, you know, work with the Unreal Engine game. But I also heard that a lot of people were saying that they wanted the developers to actually just go up to uh, a better version of the Source Engine. Because Titanfall is also the Source Engine, and players thought that they would have a better time with that engine than Unreal 4, but Unreal 4 just makes the game look better in my opinion. But then again, Source is pretty flexible. I don't know. But anyways, we live in a day and age where hacking has become pretty common. I can't tell you how many times I've received emails of suspicious activity throughout all of my accounts. At one point, my Twitter was hacked and I wasn't known as Durag anymore, I was known as a, a female adult actor. Yeah, that happened. It's even worse that a majority of us are using free Wi-Fi, because most of the time, those hotspots are unprotected. That's why the sponsor that I have for this video, NordVPN, has got you covered. NordVPN is a personal virtual private network service provider, which works on platforms like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and also mobile, Android and iOS. But Durag, what does it do? It fights back against the hackers that are trying to get into your personal information. Go to a hotspot, flip it on, use the Wi-Fi, and the hackers won't even know that you're even there, because it's just that good. With Article 13 on the horizon, NordVPN allows you to act like you're from a different country. No, oh, mate, I'm from America, USA, USA. NordVPN allows you to keep your internet open and free, as everything should be. With a no logs policy, 24 hour customer support, them allowing you to connect six different devices for one subscription, and a risk free 30 day money back guarantee, you just can't beat it. If you would like to see what's going on, check out the affiliate link that's down in the description. That or type in the link that's on the screen. There is a deal that's going on right now that takes 75% off a 3 year plan. The deal comes down to only $2.99 per month. Wow, what a deal. So if you would like to fight back against hackers that are trying to get your personal information, or a government that's trying to suppress what you look at on the internet, maybe this is worth looking into. Not only does it protect you, but it also helps the channel. And by god do I need this help, please. My, my equipment is falling apart. But with that, I want to thank Thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.